I'd like to welcome you to our temporary study. Uh, we have uh, maps with us that are very ancient. Uh, about 1864, this map on my right here uh, was printed. And behind me is a map almost the same age, about 1881. And uh, uh, these are very beautiful pieces of uh, antiquity that we appreciate uh, the use of them uh, during these special talks. Uh, the nation of Iran, uh, right here in the, the end of the Near East, uh, is very much in the news of these days. And uh, Iran, Iraq, is right next to it. And then uh, Syria is right next to Iraq. And Israel is just over here on the corner with Lebanon right above it. Egypt, of course, beginning down in the Sinai now and across in North Africa. Ethiopia down here that has now become communist. And uh, we see the powers of communism encroaching onto this area very, very strong. And uh, there will be, there will be a, a tremendous uh, explosion there in the not too future when Russia and its hordes will come down out of the north is exactly as said by the Bible, which we will be giving you in one of our, in one of our lessons. Uh, what we have sought to do in this series of lessons is to show you the continuity of uh, Iran in the Bible, beginning with Noah's grandson, who was named Elam, E-L-A-M. And this Elam <coughs> created a, a great mass of people through his sons and grandsons and great-great-grandsons and so forth until they... God called Abraham out of that area, brought him into Palestine, and while he was living there, uh, Elam already had a king, and this king would join with four other kings of that area, uh, came over and fought against uh, the, the, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, and captured them and took them away slaves. Abraham pursued them, overcame them by night, and destroyed those kings, and, uh, and brought back a lot and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah and established them back into their, into their king cities. And so Abraham came out of Ur of the Chaldees uh, in his own lifetime, had to fight an army from over in that area. And so the relationship became uh, very, very, very important. And then in, in Daniel, when, the, when uh, the people of Israel became a, a strong nation, uh, was carried away slave to the first world empire uh, which uh, is the empire of Babylon. And God gave him a vision of all empires and, and told him how uh, Babylon was like a lion and, and how the Persians were like a bear and, and how the Grecians were like a, a leopard and how the Roman Empire was diverse from any other animal. And no, no wonder. It was a, more or less a democratic type of, uh, of empire that had a senate uh, that, that passed rules and the emperor wasn't always the final word in, 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 in things, you know, that it was a different kind of an empire. It persisted for so much longer. The Babylonian Empire, 75 years, and, and the Persian Empire for 116 years. Uh, you see, these vast empires, though, though they're very, very important in the history of the world, did not last for a great length of time. And then the Babylonian Empire comes, I mean, the, the uh, Empire of Rome comes along and lasts for almost a thousand years, and you, you got something else on your hand. And then there's a continuation of the Rome, Roman Empire at the end of time, uh, where it will be revived. Now, many people believe that the, the, the economic community in Europe today is that Roman Empire. They, they do have ten members in, that, in the economic community uh, of, uh, of Europe at this present time. And maybe you don't realize it, uh, but you know that they're going to come to heaven one coin, one money. Already, uh, there's no tariff between them. Anything that's made in England can be sold in France without a, without a tax. Anything made in France can be sold in Germany without a tax. And they have a, a prosperity in Europe that they have not had for a long, long time uh, because of their, of their becoming one, these ten nations that have joined up to become one. And they are, becoming, they are becoming a factor that will have to do with the Roman Empire at the end of time. The world is getting ready for the climax of prophecy, and we hope that you and I are getting ready for it. Now, in this lesson today, we are especially speaking about how Iran was related to the birth of Christ. We've already seen how it was related uh, to, to the great men of the Bible, uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah and, uh, and, and, and Daniel and, and Esther and Nehemiah, uh, all of the, the great prophets of the Old Testament were related very strongly to Elam or to Persia. 
uh, and uh, the Babylonians took the Jews away, the Persians brought them back. And so God does have a, a very gracious feeling at this time toward Persia and fulfilling his word. And of course, after the Grecian Empire rose, the Persian Empire receded and went backward. But we're going to show you here today how uh, the, the Persians had a part in the birth of Christ and also in the uh, in the birth of the church. Let us open uh, the Bible to Matthew chapter 2. It's in verse 1. It says, Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Uh, verse 16 of that same uh, chapter says, When Herod saw that he was mocked by the wise men, they didn't obey him. That, that, that he was exceedingly wroth, and he sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coasts thereof uh, from two years old and under, according to the time when he had diligently inquired of the wise men. And it says that these wise men brought gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and gave them unto the newborn child. So here we have in Matthew three men. Now you'll be interested to know that in Iran today, they, they claim that these three kings that came, came from Sabaha, from Mahadem, and from Rejak, and that they have these three cities uh, that claim to be the place where the three kings came from that came to celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it is very significant to me that these people of Iran today, of modern Iran, we can move their ancestors right back to Noah's Ark because Noah's grandson was Elam, E-L-A-M. And that Elam is the one that created the Medes and the Persian Empire, this, this nation. And then they had such a close relationship to all the prophets here in the Old Testament, beginning with Daniel, under the end of the Old Testament. How when the Grecian Empire rose, they receded backwards, but now they come forward again into the birth of Christ. And some strange phenomena that science does not understand yet, a star from the heavens. These men that were possibly uh, masters of medicine, masters of astronomy, and, and masters of whatever science they had in those days, uh, had a, a knowledge that a king was being born in a distant place, clue over in, in Bethlehem of Judea. Uh, a king was being born and that they should go and give gifts to it. Now, now such a phenomenon should touch you. Uh, don't say, say it's incidental or accidental. This would be, th this would remove you from, uh, from logical thinking, you see. It would r remove you out of the area uh, that you were, that had the capacity to, uh, to, to, uh, to realize history or to realize prophecy or to realize things that are going to come upon the face of the earth. Here, these, this family, uh, coming from Noah, uh, rose up. Abraham come from that area. We don't know how closely he was associated with him. He came from Ur of the Chaldees, and the Chaldean land was the land of Babylonia and the land of the Persians. They're all right in there together within two or three hundred miles. And so uh, he came out of that land. That, so our Savior came from there. At his birth, three kings came from there to help celebrate his birth. They also saved his life uh, because they gave him gold, they gave him frankincense, they gave him myrrh, so that when they traveled into Egypt, they didn't go in there as poor people, they went in there as wealthy people. Those are the three items of wealth that people had along with them. And this uh, celebrated his kingship, his majesty, and, and, and made him a, a person to, to, to make a trip into Egypt and stay two or three years and to come out, come out of Egypt again. It's amazing to me that these men, wise men, a celebrated men, that they, that they would be willing, number one, to follow a star, that, that took some faith. And then to kneel and worship before a baby, uh, that, that took some humility and some insight into what God was doing because they must have known that God was sending a Savior to the world or they would not have done that. They said there is, a bo there is to be born a king of the Jews. Now, uh, uh, he'll be that king. He'll rule in Jerusalem. Prophecy isn't always for tomorrow. Sometimes it's for a long way off. And he will rule, and, and I believe it, and I want you to believe it too. It's amazing to me that they humbled themselves and came in this way. Now, in that land where these men came from, the Muslims teach about Christmas also. Uh, Muhammad, <coughs> as we are go going to be studying, lived with Jews and lived with Christians and, and couldn't accept either one of them. 
uh, couldn't accept either one of them. They were in such bad state spiritually until he couldn't accept them. It's an indictment against the church when cults come because cults are the result of the church not letting its light shine. When the church doesn't teach healing, uh, then the cults bring in healing. When the, when the church doesn't teach a, a spiritual relationship with God, uh, then you've got all kind of spiritism that brings in relationship with spirit beings. When the church fails, the devil takes over. God help the church to be all that the Bible says it should be in, in Jesus' name. The Muslim conception of Christmas is told to us in the Quran Surah uh, 19.16.34 uh, uh, that Mary was told by a messenger from God that she would give birth to a child uh, that would come from God, born of God. And then uh, Muhammad later said uh, that during the pain of, of, of childbirth that, uh, that Mary uh, grabbed a palm tree and asked that she be permitted to die. And she hears a voice uh, interpreted as the infant uh, Jesus or Gabriel. He's not quite tell, sure. And, and it tells her to look at the ground and a small stream appears uh, for refreshment to her. Uh, Mary shakes the tree and ripe dates fall down for her to eat. And she returns to her own people and, and they ask how this baby was born. And she points to the cradle and Jesus and saying, I am a slave to, uh, to Allah. And he has given me the scriptures and has appointed me a prophet. And, and uh, as you can see, this is a far different story than the true story. But you can tell that he knew the story uh, from, from the word of God. He knew the story. After all, Mohammedism only came 700 years after Christianity came. So it's a pretty late comer into the field of religion. It's the, it's the latest of world religions uh, to be born on the face of the earth. Uh, but that is their statement in their own Quran, uh, their, which is their sacred book, uh, relating to, uh, to the birth of Christ. Now, not only were the Iranians there at the birth of Christ, they were present at the birth of the church. And I'd like to read to you uh, from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. If you'd like to open your Bible real quick there to the Acts of the Apostles, I'd like to read to you beginning in verse 1 uh, in, the, in uh, chapter 2 of the Acts of the Apostles. It says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh, that they were all with one accord in one place. That's all the disciples that were together. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven. They'd got tired of hearing from the earth. As of a rushing mighty wind, a wind is created by a vacuum. And these guys are really empty. <laughs> and, and the wind came. It filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were not in church. They were in a private home. And there appeared in them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's the day the church was born. They began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in, in Jerusalem, devout men of every nation under heaven. And now when, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they heard every man speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these that speak Galileans? And how we hear we every man in our tongue wherein we were born, Parthians, I want to tell you where that is, Medes, I'll tell you where that is, Elamites, <laughs> I'll tell you where that is, dwellers in Mesopotamia, they lead the way, mind you. They lead the way. And all of these are from that same land. And, 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 and in Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, uh, which is across into Greece and Asia. And it gives you uh, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and all the places. Now, these people were all present for the celebration of the birth of the church. Now, there weren't that many present for the celebration of the birth of Jesus. Only, only these wise men came out of Persia, out of that empire, uh, over, over to see it born. And the, Roman, the Grecian Empire was already dead. And now the Roman Empire was in force and in power. And, and here we find at the birth of Christ that the first ones that were mentioned are in, in relationship uh, uh, to, the, to the birth of the church happens to be these people. It says the Parthians. Uh, they were from the area called Pars. Look on any ancient map and you'll see it. The province of Pars, which is also called Fars, F-A-R-S, is in southern Iran. And you look on your map right now today, and you'll see Fars on it. And, and so they came from that part of Iran. Iranians were there the day the church was born. Isn't that exciting? There were no Americans there, by the way. <laughs> and then it says uh, the Parthians ruled Iran from 124 before Christ to 240 after Christ. So they were, uh, these Parthians were a ruling class of people. Then it says the Medes were there. They were located in central Iran. And they were there. The Elamites were there, southwestern Iran, uh, in the capital of Shushan. Uh, that was the world capital in the times of Daniel, in the time of Esther, in the time of Isaiah. Uh, and, uh, 
And then there, and so there were 3,000 people that day that were saved on the day of Pentecost. And, and so uh, these people from Iran went back home the day the church was born and began to plant the church in their own areas. And so the church was planted in Persia beginning from the very conception of the day it was born. Now, isn't that exciting? Uh, the, uh, the history tells us or uh, tradition tells us that Andrew went into that area and preached and died there. And so they had a living apostle, the very men that came on the, the day of Pentecost and received the church and received the infilling of the Holy Ghost, went back to Iran, and, and, and later, here comes one of those very men that was leading it, Andrew, one of the 12 apostles, and here he came over to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to organize a church, and I'm going to put it in, in shape. And so the Christian church was born strong in, in that time. Uh, Iran hasn't continued to be Christian. Uh, it is uh, Mohammedan, as you know today. Uh, the largest professing group of Christians in Iran today are what we call Armenians. You've heard a lot about, you ought to study Armenians. They have, they've been around too for a long, long time. Uh, there are 160,000 of these Armenian Christians that live in Iran, and their, and their Christianity dates back to the first century. First century. There are only, uh, they say, 162,000 Christians uh, in Iran, and about 160,000 of these are, are, are among the Armenian people, and not among what you would call the Arab people. In a book called Christians in Persia, uh, uh, it tells us that in 1624, King Shah Abbas passed a law that Christians uh, who became a Muslim in religion, could claim all the property of any of his relations back for four generations in the 17th century. Now, that's what happened to Christianity back there. It is said that 50,000 Christians renounced their faith in order to get property. And, and I, I'm glad to bring you that from a book called Christians in Persia uh, that you can uh, go and get in your own bookstore and, and let you know what happened to the church. They sold themselves out. They sold themselves out in Persia. What a wonderful thing if they'd all died. Said we would rather die uh, than to do it. Uh, only a few of these were Armenians. Most of them were Christians that were not of the Armenian uh, branch. There were uh, several branches of Christians. Uh, in, 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 in Iran uh, that, that you have today, uh, persecution followed persecution. When the Islamic religion invaded Iran by military force, and uh, they, they uh, hurt most uh, the Zoroastrians, if you Zoroastrian religion is interesting for you to know. Uh, it is certainly not the true religion. Uh, but they were the strongest religion there, and they came against them first. And w at one time, Zoroastrianism was a state church, and this was uh, supplemented by the Islamic church, uh, or, the Mohammedan, or the Mohammedan religion. Slowly, persecution came against all Christians in Iran, and uh, they assessed extra, extra taxes uh, that only Christians had to bear. And they were not permitted uh, to make Muslim converts. If they did, they were either executed or, or banished. They were not permitted to display a cross in, in the whole land. Were not permitted uh, to, to display a cross. They were persecuted in, in many ways in many provinces. Now, they were, they were in, in different provinces, they were persecuted in, in more or, or less ways and by different emperors are rulers in more or less ways. I, but when Genghis Khan came, uh, the Mongol came crushing through that part of the world and marched into Iran uh, and, uh, in the middle 1200s, the church was almost eliminated at that time. There were only remnants left, and the few that were left ran into the mountains of western Iran to live. And so the church uh, that went there 2,000 years ago, uh, it didn't stand up well as it did in Constantinople. Well, it didn't stand up well there either. Uh, as you know, the Greek church there is very, very small today, and many of the former churches are now is, is Islamic places of worship. Uh, they, they have taken them from them. In the early history of Iran, the church prospered uh, under such kings as, as Assassins, S-A-S-S-I-A-N-S, who ruled from 224, uh, uh, this group, until 642. And at that time, Sush, S-U-S-H, uh, was the, the center of Christianity in Iran. But in the seventh century, with, when, when Islam uh, began, began to come and the Mohammedan re religion uh, came, uh, then the Christians uh, began to, to fade away in that land and became a, a persecuted people with all kinds of extra taxes upon them, could not make converts, 
uh, they were, it was a, a, a forbidden uh, to make converts of the Muslims, and they could not display a cross. And, and today, at, at this moment, uh, we, we understand from people that have recently come from Iran that there may be uh, maybe 5,000 Christians, uh, real active Christians in that land today uh, of over 32 millions of people. Now that gives us a, a, a kind of a little showing of the spiritual side of Iran at the birth of Christ when the three kings came from that part of the world to celebrate his birth. And when hundreds were present, hundreds were present, and maybe thousands, uh, when the church was born in Jerusalem and that it got an even start with the, with the church in Jerusalem because they were there the same day it was born and that they had one of the apostles that came and dwelt among them and established the church in that land and that it did prosper for several centuries. Uh, but when, when a church or anything else uh, uh, becomes uh, satisfied and does not make converts and, and does not be aggressive and does not love lost souls, at that moment it begins to die. And so the Christian church that used to be so dominant in the land that you're re reading so much about in your daily papers of Iran. Uh, it slowly died, and I wouldn't want to blame anybody but the church. Uh, the church the church prospers on persecution. <laughs> oh, if, if in this country here, if you want somebody to Christ, uh, you'd have to die for it. There'd be a lot of people one to Christ in this country. Uh, if, it, if it meant your life, they'd give their life for it. They, they'd want to do that. And, and, uh, and so I wouldn't want to blame the Islamic religion, although uh, that religion moves with a sword and not a Bible. Uh, they don't move the same way uh, that, that, that the Christians think about it. Uh, if you study the, the, the whole structure of Islamic religion, uh, they are doing it today just like they have always done it. It, it, it moves with a sword. When they say change, they mean change. And, and so uh, uh, th that has been their history until this moment. Now we have seen together uh, the, the Iran, as you know it today, that this place called Iran uh, goes right back uh, to the time of Noah. And, and you see Mount Ariat is right close by, just two or three hundred miles over here is Mount Ariat on the borders of Russia and on the borders of Turkey in this area here, and right very close to this place called Iran. And, and so uh, uh, it has been uh, in relationship to the Bible, uh, right, right back uh, from the time of the flood un until the day in which we live today. And we have seen it go through empires. It has gone through the birth of Christ, the birth of the church, and then in the what we call the Dark Ages. The, in the Dark Ages, Christianity in Iran receded and, and became almost nothing. Uh, the Muslim religion became dominant. And as of this moment, as you have seen in your daily papers and your magazine, it's really dominant uh, there until today. And it <coughs> will very likely remain so until the end of the world because very soon, as I'm going to show you in our next lesson, uh, Iran is going to become related and associated with Russia and, and with communism. And it will come down, it will come down uh, with Russia against Israel. And there in the plains of Megiddo, God will even the score with those that have fought Israel. To those that have fought against Israel, God will even the score. Now you say, Brother Summerall, I don't believe that. Well, my friend, what I believe or what you believe will not change anything. It's what the Bible says about it. It's what the Bible says about it. Prophecy, it, it comes true. Prophecy does come true. And we must rely upon prophecy to teach us how to live during this hour. We're not confused with the issues today. We're not afraid of the oil problem. We're not afraid of the energy problem. I think our State Department and our president were really shocked when they discovered that in Iran they had a religious problem and not a political one. That these men that took over at the American embassy there were not boys and they were not students. <laughs> you better believe it. They, they, they were military men and they are strong men. They will defy anybody except the Ayatollah. And I don't know about what they got, would, would defy him too if they needed to. These were some of the strongest men in their nation that came and took over the, 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 the American embassy. And it was not, <clears throat> not in a political way. They wanted to destroy America because America is the very seat of, a, of evangelism and of Christianity in the world today. And so it is the coming together of, 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 of great world religions just like this. And so you and I have already decided which side we're on. We're on the side of the Lord Jesus Christ. He told us these things would be. Iran could never join with Russia without this. Ethiopia could never join with Russia until, until they had the king removed from the throne. And so these are all prophetic things. Don't be asleep. Be wise. Understand prophecy. And know that these things must come to pass 
before the Lord comes. And if we know these things, happy are we uh, when we prepare our hearts that when the Lord Jesus Christ returns again, we will be ready for his coming. May I bless you, please? It would be a pleasure. Now, Lord, uh, at this moment, cause, cause my friend to, to consider the life that he or she is living at this moment. Uh, these days in which we live are prophetic. They're not natural days. They're not, they're not days that will continue in the same as they are. Uh, these are prophetic days that are marching to destiny, that are marching toward the great tribulation, that are marching toward the battle of Armageddon. So help us each to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Help us to understand the times in which we live. Now for your blessings upon these, my friends, and those that do not know you, help them to come to know you right now in Jesus' name. In the hour of crisis, it's a time to know God. And I urge you at this moment to give your heart to Him. All you have to do is to look up and say, God, I'm sorry of my sins. Forgive me. He will forgive you, and He will come into your heart. Receive Him right now in Jesus' name. I know these lectures are very important, and we'd like for you to hear them again and again. We have captured this on this little cassette tape I hold in my hand. You will get two of these lectures for only, for only $5. Two of these lectures for only $5. We'd like for you to, uh, to by all means, uh, get yours today. They are all completed and ready to be mailed. Just send $5 and you will get two of these lectures. There are five of these and you can get all five of them. Uh, and then you'll have the entire series uh, regarding Iran and prophecy. And it is, it is exceedingly exciting and, uh, and, and knowledgeable for you to understand uh, the, the, the world news, that you won't be confused. Nor will you be depressed. God doesn't want us sad. He wants us to be a glad people. We want to thank you for being with us today. You send your $5 to Lester Summerall, Box 12, uh, South Bend, Indiana, zip code 46624. You will receive your tape right away. And until we're back with you again, let me say it's a, such a joy to welcome you into our whole arena of teaching. And, and we say, until we meet again, uh, uh, keep looking up to God. He that is to come will come. His name is Jesus. And above all, protect your faith. I say, feed your faith. Because in feeding your faith, you starve your doubts to death. So I urge you, let your doubts die. Let your faith live. And if you'll do that, you will live wonderfully in this life. You will live wonderfully in the life that is to come. And we live forever. Thank you. Goodbye now.